Hey guys, welcome to Noob's Perspective. Today I'm going to show you how to set up a game server using Linux Game Server Manager, and I'm going to do it in my Proxmox environment. Linux Game Server Manager can be found at linuxgsm.com. This is a very easy to use tool to set up game servers for popular games. Before we get our Linux game servers going, I need to create a new virtual machine in Proxmox, and it needs to be a Linux distribution. My favorite distro to use for game servers is Xubuntu, Ubuntu. And I like Xubuntu because it is a lightweight version of Ubuntu. I'll go to my Proxmox node and create a new VM. I can just take the defaults to create my virtual machine. It should be just fine for my game server. Take the defaults here for Linux. I'm gonna leave everything here as default. For the disk size, your mileage may vary. I'm going to use 80 gigabytes just to ensure that I have plenty of space for as many game servers as I'd like to add. I'm not sure what the overhead costs are going to be on some of these other game servers. I've used 7 Days to Die and Minecraft Bedrock Edition. Two cores for me has been good for Minecraft Bedrock Edition. With 7 Days to Die, I found four cores performed a little bit better. I'm going to start out with two and just see what my needs end up being. For RAM, in the past, four gigs was fine for Minecraft, but six gigs made Seven Days to Die perform a bit better when I had four to six people joining the server. And I keep ballooning device checked as default. Make sure you do have network going to the virtual machine. By default, mine's using the vert IO, which is just fine for my use case. You can check the start after created button and click finish. My Xubuntu installation media was broken, so I had to go and grab that again and it's a different day. So try or install Xubuntu. I think it'd be cool to call it Zubuntu with that head. Is that gonna catch on? I'm going to install it. I'm gonna do a minimal installation. Xubuntu is already lightweight. I only need this for the game server components. So I'm going to do the minimal installation to reduce any overhead, which would not be that much anyway. Download updates while installing. Yeah, that's fine. I want everything to be up to date. I don't need the third-party software graphics for Wi-Fi because it has a virtual wired network interface. All right, I'm gonna erase disk. You don't need to do anything with the advanced features. I'm gonna give that ZFS though. And install. For the name, this is gonna be just the default account. You can call it whatever you want. I'm gonna do LGSM. And now we wait. This could take a while and I did opt for it to do the updates while it does the install. So this could take a little bit longer. All right, that is done and I will restart the virtual machine. If you run into an issue where it's trying to boot from the installer again, go to the hardware tab for this virtual machine and you can remove the CD drive. Log in to that main account you have here. Let's get started with setting the root password. By default, this has a root account installed, but it's missing a password. The command to do here is sudo pass wd root. Now we have a root password. Before we begin with installing anything, we wanna make sure that the IP address for this virtual machine is static. You can either reserve the IP address in your router for this machine, or you can set it as static here. You can do both. The router will have top priority for setting the IP address. So will come to network up here, edit connections, click on your wired connection and click on the settings. We are interested in the IPv4 settings. I'm going to set it to manual in the method here. For the address, you'll need to know what addresses are available on your network. If you try to give it one that is already given to another device, you're going to have a conflict and it probably will not work. I'm gonna give it 69. Yeah, boy. For the subnet mask, you can just use 255.255.255.0, or you can use 24, which means the same thing. The gateway will just be my router. For the DNS servers, if you don't add any, it'll just use whatever your router is using by default. You can specify some if you'd like. Don't worry about it if you're unsure. I'm just gonna use Google's DNS servers. Click save. The next thing we'll want to do is set up some firewall rules. So when you have your Minecraft server set up and people are trying to connect, it's going to connect over a specific port. You can think of a port like a door on your network. The door can be open or it can be closed. Minecraft, by default, will use port 19132. I need to make sure that I open that port so that when the traffic comes in, that port is open. In my router, I'll specify what to do when someone comes through that door. I'm using firewalled. So that's firewallD.org. I'll click on the documentation down here where it says open a port or service. 
open up your terminal emulator, sudo apt install firewall D. These nuts! <laughs> now we just need to allow the ports. So Minecraft also, I believe, uses ports 19131 and 19133. So I'm going to enable 19131 through 19133. It may use that 31 and 33 for some other purposes, but the main port is going to be 19132. We're going to open a port instead of a service. So make sure you're looking at the instructions for the port. We're going to use this second line right here. Make sure you have this permanent tag right here. If you don't, when you restart the virtual machine, it won't have those ports open anymore and your server will not be playable. By default, you have a public zone that's installed. You don't have to specify this or even worry about this. If you're just copy and pasting, that's just fine. Just make sure instead of port 80, we're doing 19131 through 33 and any other ports you might need if you have other projects going on. When you specify the port, you are able to do more than one port. To do a range, you can do this. That's gonna cover the 19132 that I need. Then forward slash and put in your protocol. I don't remember if Minecraft needs TCP and or UDP, so I'm going to allow both on my firewall. For the protocol, I believe you will have to add them separately. I'm not sure if there's syntax to be able to add them in one line together. So I've added TCP and then I just copied that line and change the end to UDP. Our ports are open, we've set a static IP address. The next two parts is to actually get the game server installed and then we need to go to the router and make sure we have port forwarding set up. If you haven't already and if you'd like to, you can check for updates. And I have 56 packages, so I'm gonna go ahead and apply those. Don't you just love it when things are up to date? It's so satisfying. While you're doing this, the most important thing is to stay hydrated. If you can guess exactly what drink I have, I'll pin you. With that finished, I'm going to restart the virtual machine. Some of these changes may require a restart to really take effect. Before I get into showing you how to install the specific server, I'm going to make the changes on my router. Your router will likely look different than mine. Port forwarding may show up as an advanced setting. Mine is located under advanced setup. Port forwarding forward slash port triggering. I'm going to add a custom service in my case. If yours doesn't allow you to do a custom service, that's fine. You should be able to add whatever ports you need and specify whatever protocol is necessary. I'm calling this Minecraft Bedrock Server. Perhaps in the future I'll do a Java server as well. I'm just going to leave it as TCP and UDP. You can use the dash to specify a range. On my router, I can do commas also to add more ports. By default, my router uses the same port range for the internal port. For the IP address, make sure to use the IP address that you set for your virtual machine. Mine is already in the list in case I forgot, and I had set it to 69. <laughs> yeah, boy. With that applied, it should be good to go on the network in the virtual machine. We'll go back to the virtual machine and sign into this main account here. I'm going to open the web browser so I can have the instructions in the virtual machine as I go. I can just copy and paste the commands from Linux GSM. The first thing you see is the compatibility. I already know that Xubuntu, Xubuntu, I forgot what I've been calling it. I already know that Ubuntu is supported, and Xubuntu will also be supported. I have done this on CentOS and the experience was pretty good. These are some packages that you will need. You can copy that and paste it into your terminal emulator. The next thing to do is the actual install right here. Step one is we need to create a user, so Minecraft Bedrock Server. You have to be root, so what I'm going to do is switch user to root, so su-root. And that's why we set the root password so we could do this without having to sign into the root account at the login. As the root, I can add user, set a password that you can remember. You don't really have to fill this part out, but I'm just going to do MCB server, nothing for room, work, home, other. Now we need to switch over to the MCB server. So let's exit that switch user command that we were in, which is control D. So that logged out of root. We're back into our LGSM account. And then we're going to paste over to that account that we just created. And then we can install the Minecraft server. We're going to install the Minecraft server. Click yes. Right here it's checking the dependencies. And if any of the dependencies were missing, it would try to install those. Okay, was it successful? I didn't see any errors up there, so I'm going to press enter for yes. If you want to start your server, you will do dot forward slash MCB server start. To test it, I'm going to open Minecraft. You'll click play and go to the servers tab. 
This one's my old server, so I'm actually going to remove that. You're going to add server. If you remember, I did 10.0.0.69. By default, the port is 19132, and that's what I'm going to keep. So I've saved it. And this is a great sign. It says online, shows how many players are in, and the current ping. Looks like it's working. I'm going to play around with the performance, and I'm getting lots of FPS. When I look around, it does look a little laggy. It could be on the server. I'll check the server usage when there are people in it. Good way to do that is to window your Minecraft screen so you can look at both. With Bedrock, it seems to disconnect when you move away from this active screen. To see the console for the server you're running, do dot forward slash and then the name of your server and then console. You can press enter when you see yes. If you've ever run a Minecraft server before, this will look very familiar to you. IPv4 19132 and that's what that was. 19133 is actually used by IPv6. Here's some additional ports that I actually neglected to open. So if I need to, I could go and add those. It looks like the game's running fine without that. I don't know if it has anything to do with this error, but I might go and add that later. If you look down here, it says player connected, and this is my Minecraft account. So I know that I am in the game and it's running right now. With just me, we're looking at about 20 to 30% usage with just one person. I'm gonna run around and see if that changes anything. Okay, so it is going a little higher and I think that's because when I move uh, into the distance it's going to be loading some more chunks whatever I have my game set to you I saw it hit 37 percent I don't think it went any higher than that with just one person and we're at almost half of our RAM so I'll need to test with more users present what if you want someone to connect to your Minecraft server and they're not on the same local network as you meaning they're not at your house connected to your Wi-Fi if you want your neighbor next door to be able to connect or your brother in another state, you're going to need to find your public IP address to give to them. You can't just give them, in my example, 10.0.0.69 because they're not on the same network as me. So that's not going to take them to the server. You can browse to what is my public IP.com and this will tell you your public IP address. This is the IP address that you are using to browse the internet. Your internet service provider is who determines this. One thing to keep in mind is your internet service provider may shuffle through IP addresses every so often. In my case, it seems to be about every six months they give me a different IP address. You can request a static IP address from some internet service providers. So if you want 100% availability and uptime, definitely look into that. For me, it's not a big deal. My friends and family will just tell me, hey, the server's down, and I'll check and see if there was either an update to Minecraft that I'm missing on the server, or if the public IP address has changed. If there's an update on the server, then you actually have to go in and update. If the IP address has changed, you don't have to make any changes on the server. You just need to give that new IP address to whoever's joining your server from off of your local network. To test it, I'm going to take my phone off of Wi-Fi. You can do this with anything that is off your local network. Consoles and Pocket Edition are running Bedrock. Minecraft Windows 10 Edition is also running Bedrock. So I'm going to click Play on my mobile phone. Click Servers in the top right. Bottom left, click Add Server. For the server name, you can put whatever you want. For the server address, you need to enter in what you see on whatismypublicip.com. And the default port, 19132, works just fine if you did everything as default. I know it found my server because I see the server name, Linux GSM. It's a little blurry. It says Linux GSM dash, and then it has the version. So I'm going to click Join Server, and I was able to join. It is actually nighttime in the game, so it's a little hard to see. If you look at the computer here, I had to switch accounts because you can only be signed into your account on one device. So I, this was my initial connection, then disconnected, and then I reconnected from my phone, which is not even on Wi-Fi. I'm actually going to turn it to daytime in the game. Perfect. Set the time, and as you can see here, it's been set, and I'm getting killed by a spider. If you have any questions on maintenance or you run into any trouble getting set up, let me know in the comments, and I will try my best to respond to you and help you out in any way that I can. This was Noob's Perspective. Thanks for watching.